Hello, I'm Kurt Wolford with the Lake County Stormwater Management Commission and we're going to go over uh, how to fill a, a sandbag properly and how to stack them for flood fighting techniques. Sandbags generally come in a polyethylene shape, they have ties on top and they're called sandbags because they get filled up with sand but any material can be used to fill a sandbag. So uh, dirt, clay, but sand is generally the easiest to work with, the easiest to shovel. When it's full to the top, it can weigh up to 70 pounds and it doesn't compact right in the wall. So you only want to fill the sandbag up halfway to two thirds. The ties on the top don't necessarily need to be used. If you're going to be filling sandbags on site and they're going to be placed immediately, you don't necessarily need to use the ties. The ties do become effective if you're going to pre-fill bags and have them ready and transport them. Filling sandbags is a physically and mental arduous process. It can take a long time depending on how large of an embankment you're going to construct. So proper lifting techniques are critical. The person holding the bags doesn't want to be leaning over and using their back too much. They can sit down or kneel on the ground. Use your legs to lift, don't use your back. Other safety precautions, you want to dress for the environment if it's going to be cold, dress in layers so you can take off clothing. If it's sunny out, you want to wear a hat, wear sunscreen, and stay hydrated, have food available. Gloves are important because your hands are going to get raw, might get blisters. Holding these bags, holding the shovel, good pair of gloves will help you a long way. This here is an overfilled bag. You don't want to overfill the bag. First. It's very heavy. You're gonna have other volunteers helping out. There might be teenagers, older folks, and moving sandbags this way will, it'll wear people out. Right here, this is about a half-filled sandbag. This is the proper, proper capacity you want. It's easy to manage. It's also better to place, because when you lay it on the ground, you'll be able to pack it down. When you have a full bag, it's hard to compact and form into place. When placing the sandbag, you want to fold over the flap, but leave some room in there so the sand can move around. Then drop it into place using the weight of the sand to help compact it on the ground. Then use your foot to help tamp down the sandbag into place. When stacking sandbags, you also want to avoid continuous joints. So you want to stagger the sandbags on the pile in both directions. When the base of the sandbag is built, you want to stagger them. And also when you're going up with the sandbags, you want to place them so there's no continuous joints down the line. That's where you're going to have seepage come through. Determining the amount of sand and sandbag needed is going to be a factor of the length of the wall you're building and how high it is. If you're building a larger wall, it's recommended to build a pyramid shape. If you're going to be protecting an area that's uh, up to a foot, maybe a little more. Single stacking is okay, but you don't want to go too high with single stacking because it could overtop. For further information on sandbagging methods and techniques, visit SMC's website.